Hope you've been enjoying our videos so far. Please check out this next video on an ahi poke recipe. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and sign up for notifications. And please share it with your friends. Mahalo. So here we go, starting off with some cubed ahi. Um, the ahi that I'm using right now happens to be of the frozen variety. And which is actually one of the points I wanted to make in this video that in order to make poke that you enjoy, that you and your family and friends enjoy, doesn't mean you need to pay any, you know, more than five dollars a pound for the for the ahi, or doesn't mean you gotta, you know, it has to be sushi grade or sashimi grade. That's just people trying to justify charging you twenty three dollars a pound for poke. So, you know, by all means, if you're like me, living on the mainland, you want some some poke to remind you of home. You know, you can find these frozen cubes at Cash and Carry any of the Asian stores, uh, Winco even carries some of it. So, you know, by all means, don't don't feel like you need to use really, really high grade sushi quality, sashimi quality, sash, uh, ahi, that's just, that's just BS. So as long as it's fish that, you know, it's good, not rotten or, you know, not fake, you know, it's, it's ahi. So um, that's all you need to make a good bowl of poke. So I've pre-cut everything because um, as you watch more of my videos, you'll see that I kind of wing it. Um, also, the key with using these frozen cubes is, and what I've done prior to starting the video, is um, remove all the liquid. You know, so once it defrosts, you know, in the refrigerator, you defrost it, uh, cut up in the bag a little bit, pour out all the water, and then I like to um, dump it in the bowl on some paper towel and just let it sit for a little bit, and then. Um, you know, work it around with some more paper towel and get it nice and padded, somewhat dry, uh, remove all the excess moisture. And then I, I immediately put maybe about a, a pinch or a quarter teaspoon of uh, Hawaiian salt. I like to use uh, this variety, you know, without showing the brand. <laughs> but uh, this red uh, rock salt is my salt of choice. And I usually mix that in and I let that sit while I'm chopping all the vegetables and prepping everything else just so the salt can really, you know, soak into the fish, get some flavor in there. Um, and then you can always adjust later to your own taste, you know, more or less salt, but that's usually about where I start. Um, so what I usually do next uh, when I'm making this, this variety of poke is I like to add in a little bit of onions. So I've cut some red onions and this I usually kind of put in a little bit, stir it around, see how the fish to onion ratio is looking. Um, my, one of my daughters likes it heavy onion and the other one doesn't. So neither of them are here tonight. So I'm just gonna kind of go by my taste. So you mix that in a little bit toss it up. I like to cut my onions. Some people cube it. I like to get this kind of um, more of a like a longer so I, so I kind of cut the onions on a diagonal and I don't, I don't really dice it. And then I then I slice it a little thinner because it's more the shape that I'm going over but I don't want it too thick where you know you taste onions all night before you go to bed. So okay that's about a good mix there. All right. Then what I do next is for this variety, here in, uh, on the mainland, I'm gonna let you guys in on my little secret that I found. So at one of the Asian markets, I found this variety of seaweed. Um, it's not that expensive. So I think one of these boxes, I'm only gonna use about this much. And that wasn't even like a quarter of the box. So, and it's frozen, so I usually just, and it's pre-salted, so I usually just cut off the amount that I'm gonna use, rinse it under some water, and then chop it up a little more so I can mix it in. Some people don't like the seaweed, but this really reminds me of the poke back home. Um, so I usually just toss that in there. And then just mix that up. For a while, I was, going, I was getting by with some poke kits that had dehydrated seaweed in it. Um, which did the job, but wasn't the same. And then uh, one day I was at my local Asian market and 
in the frozen section and I noticed this box of seaweed. So I tried it and it, it's perfect. It's, you know, it's not exactly Ogo, but it'll, it'll do and it hits the spot. So I'll just give that a good mix. Then what I also like to do for some spice, and this is definitely to taste, um, I sprinkle in some red chili flakes just to give it a little bit of heat. Toss that in a little bit. Okay, then another thing that um, a lot of poke you'll find in Hawaii that I don't really see people up here doing and, um, and what they try to do to try and replicate the flavor that they think they're tasting, um, they put sesame oil. So when I'm making po poke, I usually grab the sesame oil and then I put it back down where it was because I don't use it in my poke. Um, but what I do use is I use a combination of black and white toasted sesame seeds so it's not the doesn't put that oily consistency um, if I'm making a big batch before a party I can leave it in the fridge without the the oil coagulating uh, you know a lot of times when you put sesame oil in your poke put it in the fridge and the sesame oil starts to harden so to avoid that um, I use sesame seeds so I use this grinder that I found on Amazon and I put a good dose Kind of eyeball it to how I want it. Um, and I put a nice variety in, and there's probably some flavor profile why, you know, black versus white. But I, I kind of just do it for the visual, um, just for the the visual aspect of the the mix of the black and the white um, sesame seeds on there. Um, but what I like about it is it gives that nutty flavor. Um, it doesn't fully replicate that flavor I was mentioning, which is from Inamona or Kukui nut, or here on the mainland, you might know it as candle nut. So um, that's very hard to come by. And when you do find it, it's a bit expensive. So what I've come to do is I use this ground up sesame seeds. And it does the trick. And now that I got this all mixed up, Another thing I like to add is I'll just do a, just a dash of soy sauce. And this is by preference. Some people like their poke a little wet. I kind of like mine more on the dry side. So I just put a little soy sauce in there just for a little flavor and just a dab of oyster sauce. Just a little. And mix that all together. And then lastly, uh, I've pre-cut some uh, green onions. I'll mix that in. Gives a nice color pop too. All right, and there you have it. This is my own personal version of some light shoyu oyster sauce poke or ahi limu poke. Um, if you come to my house for a party, this is the poke you'll find. Yep.